All right, we're going to look at the document that after the road pirate forces you off the road and approaches your car by force of arms and gives you the citation, he turns it over to the uh, the prosecuting attorney, and uh, lo and behold, you'll get this document that we're going to look at here next. And uh, we're going to go over, and I'm going to show you why every element on there is complete and utter fraud. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to show you uh, just a quick little introduction I'm going to do when I send it to him. I'm going to put my name at the top in the matter of Alfonso Nicholas Fagiola. I'm going to put who I addressed it to. He's Andrew Goldberg, public servant. He's not a judge. He's a public servant. He might think he's some god or like some judge. But he's a public servant. <clears throat> so I'm going to say no, it's going to, I'm call it Notice of Deficiencies and irrega Irregularities Supported by Declaration of Alfonso Nicholas Fagiola. So not everything has to be an affidavit. Because along with this package, basically, I, I submitted my affidavit of status. So this, uh, I'll declare under penalty of perjury and sign it and put, you know, put my thumbprint on it. So you don't, not every document has to be a, an affidavit. Just like very, very important documents you, you want to do a, an affidavit as. But in this one, I'm going to state, I am in Alfonso Nicholas Fagiola, uh, creation of God Almighty, uh, not the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Now serve notice of claim, trespass, forgery, fraud, and barratry. In its present form, the attached document evidences crimes, deficiencies, irregularities, and is non-compliant with the state and federal constitutions. Andrew Goldberg, trespasser, has three days upon receipt to cure all deficiencies and irregularities. Failure to do so, this claim of $100,000 shall execute upon default against Andrew Goldberg. In other words, three days passed, day four, I consider this a valid claim at that point. Uh, and it's going to be for Andrew Goldberg administering my property without right. I am in uh, Fonzo Nicholas Fagiola, have personal knowledge of, and asseverate uh, the following. Now let's look at this document, this phony document they send you. Look at number one, right off the bat, bang, we got a, we got a fraudulent statement up here. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Great, let's go look at the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And let's, let's enlarge this just a little bit here so we can easily look at this. Okay. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is a corporate fiction, and it, I, a man, am not owned by it, am not a citizen of it, have no obligations or contracts with it, and do not reside in it. So we're just going to bang out the obvious. This is, this is basically, you know, that the, the, the little kid hollering the emperor has no clothes. We, we, we pick apart everything they do. You don't, you don't see them any ground whatsoever. <clears throat> you don't give them an inch. You challenge everything. So let's go look at the other uh, second one. Look, more fraud. County of Delaware. Okay, great. That's another. That's a county within, uh, supposedly, within the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It's going to be the same repeat here. County of Delaware is a corporate fiction, and it, I am in, I'm not owned by it, I'm not a citizen of it, have no obligations or contracts with it, <clears throat> and do not reside in it. Because they're putting it up there like it has some kind of authority. It's, these are just corporations. These are, this is like McDonald's and Taco Bell. It's really no different. Let's go look at uh, the, even there. The, the, this is supposed to be. This looks like a seal. When I first saw this, this you know I thought this is a Pennsylvania seal. And then when I looked it up, this is actually supposed to be the Pennsylvania coat of arms. But what's really odd is I don't see any writing around here. I don't see no Pennsylvania around here or, or County of Delaware. It's just sort of a you know a, a floating logo. And really that's what these are. These are logos. Seals mean nothing. In other words, they, they grant no authority to any body or any individual. You know, this, this is no different than a McDonald's logo or a Taco Bell logo on your page. Really, it, it's got no more weight than that. And the funny thing about this, this is actually a coat of arms, not the Pennsylvania seal. Now, coat of arms were used in battles where when guys used to dress up in, you know, uh, uh, armor and they, they, they couldn't tell each other apart, they would put the, uh, the coat of arms on the shield so they knew who was who. So this is really used in battle, this stuff. What's weird is, what are these people declaring battle on me? Uh, uh, war against me or something? Cause it, cause it's, it's very strange to put that on there without putting any lettering around it. But let's go after that too. Coat of arms, an unidentified symbol. I don't see no lettering on it. Resembling the Pennsylvania coat of arms, which is not used in the official capacity of the state seal. And that's actually right out of their stuff that the, the coat of arms is not used in the official capacity of the state seal. So then why are these guys putting it up there? And I, I state that it, you know, it's just a corporate symbol. It's a McDonald's logo. It's a Taco Bell logo. You know, neither symbol 
coat of arms or the state seal confer any distinction in law. Distinction means force of law. It's because somebody puts a logo on something, that's an identifier. It doesn't give them any more power to anything. Let's go back and look at number four, rescheduling notice. Well, yeah, this is one of them odd little courts that I showed up to when the court was closed. And if you wanted to find more out about that, go listen to the, uh, the Mr. Roboto interview that's up on, up on the website that, that Crow had done. Uh, so somebody did a rescheduling notice. Ain't that nice of them? Uh, great. Uh, under uh, Rescheduling for what? Rescheduling notice. I said, my body, all that I own and claim, is my exclusive property. I, a man, Alfonso Nicholas Fagioa, am not property of Andrew Goldberg, public servant. have no obligation or contract with Andrew Goldberg. Andrew Goldberg is administering my property outright. So my body's my property. Everything I own or claim is my property. So... This is the petty fogger shyster lawyer. I mean, well, he's, they're, they're all the same lawyers, judges. They're, they're, you know, all, every judge was a lawyer at one point, pretty much. So this is the petty fogger shyster that spearheaded this, uh, you know, this attempted theft. <clears throat> so I'm just basically stating the obvious. Listen, I, I'm, not, I'm not his property, and I, got, I have no, uh, you know, I, I have no contractor obligations with this guy. So what's he doing rescheduling anything? Let's go look at number five here. Number five, magisterial district, and they got some hokey number there. Okay, great. This is a corporate fiction. It's an it created by other men and women, public servants. I, a man, have no obligation or contract with it or the men and women who created and manage it, nor is it a court of record and therefore cannot be a court of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is one of those states that actually comes out and states that every court of Pennsylvania is a court of record. Well, this one doesn't even come close to meeting the, uh, the, the six elements of a court of record. So uh, this is not a court of record. So I, I just, you know, like I said, pointing out the obvious here. And if we go to number six, uh, look, honorable. Yeah, he's real honorable, this guy. He's got a note to the, the state and federal constitutions that he's, he's just, you know, you, you talk about sedition and treason. These judges are, are you know, they're textbook sedition and treason. So let's go look at number six. Basically, I stated Honorable Andrew Goldberg. In America, the courts of common law know no distinction, Honorable or Esquire, you know, these lawyers like to call themselves. It is needless to add that as we are not encumbered by a nobility, there is no such distinction, Honorable, in America as all men being equal in the eye of the law. So just because some corporate fiction, <clears throat> people of a corporate fiction slap the title on you of honorable doesn't give you any more power than, than, than I have. Uh, it's all charade, all fraud. <clears throat> Let's go look at number seven. Number seven, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Great, they're, they're versing me. Look, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania versus Alfonso Fadjo. Might as well said Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck up here. Because I, how am I going to fight a fiction? <clears throat> I mean, this is just you know, uh, th this is fairy tale. This is fairy tale stuff. You know, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is a corporate fiction, and it, not an adversary. In any case, you must have an adversary. There's got to be another party with standing that you damaged or harmed in some way. Uh, a fictional entity. You know, Mickey Mouse is not an adversary. Donald Duck's not an adversary, and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is not an adversary. You know, I, I state. Uh, it can't act. It can't make and move, move a claim. It has no rights. Let me fix that. It has no rights. Uh, it can't be done wrong or harm. I can't hurt a, a fiction. It can't have personal knowledge of a matter. It can't testify. And it can't have standing. Like I said, standing means that you had a right violated or you were harmed or damaged in some way. Uh um, so I can't have standing against basically a man. I mean, it's, it's just absurd. Now, if it's fiction versus fiction in their little fairy tale word, wet, wet, wet world, well, yeah. And that's how they operate, fiction versus fiction. But I'm not a fiction. I'm a flesh and blood man. So let's go to number eight. Alfonso Fagiola. That's, that's me. Hey, hi, a man, Alfonso Nicholas Fagiola. I'm not property of any man, woman, corporation. Have no contract with any man, woman, corporation. Cited in the attached document. The use of my identity constitutes trespass, forgery, fraud, and identity theft. As Andrew Goldberg, public servant, is using my identity without my consent, without probable cause, and without just cause, in an effort to extort and do wrong and harm to I, a man, Alfonso Nicholas Fagiola. Now, here's the weird thing. Most of these states consider uh, traffic citations, they, they call them quasi-criminal. Well, it's either criminal or it's not. It can't be quasi-criminal. 
So it's the, these are criminal allegations. You know, you run in a traffic light was criminal. I don't, I don't know who you, I don't know who you damaged. Did you damage the traffic light? But uh, if they don't have probable cause, that cop should have never stopped. The only two ways a cop can stop you, he needs a warrant for your arrest or he needs probable cause. And probable cause means he needs to see you commit a crime or he's got to have evidence that you're about to commit a crime. Uh, you having an expired sticker or no license or running a light is not probable cause. Even though a lot of these, you know, the, these genius uh, uh, policemen, they'll say, oh, well, what's your probable cause? Oh, you went through a red light. Uh, it's not probable cause because if some cop see me go through a red light and he couldn't catch me, but he knew where I lived and he went to the judge and he said, hey, I got watch this guy Fat Joe go through the red light. Uh, judge, I need a warrant for his, you know, I need a warrant to, 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 to basically go write a, write a ticket for him or, you know, put him under arrest. Judge is going to look at him and laugh at him. Judge is not going to sign no warrant for him <laughs> for a traffic uh, violation because he knows it's not probable cause. He knows it's not a crime. So these, you know, the, these cops, they, 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 a lot of these cops don't have a clue what probable cause is. So let's move on to 10 here. Number 10. Let's go look at 10. We got docket number. Well, great. Look at this. They're, they're creating a docket number. They have, they have no plaintiff. <laughs> they, you know, there's, there's no moving party. And they have no cause of action. There's no probable cause. There's no crime they could cite. And yet they're creating docket numbers. Ain't that special. Docket number, you know, blah, blah, blah. This evidence is trespass. It's trespass against me. It's, tres it's forgery. It's fraud. It's baratry. Baratry is a, 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 you know, a frivolous suit that somebody's bringing against you. And I put, you know, as noted in paragraph seven and eight, so I, I refer them back. Uh, let's move on to number eleven. Number eleven, case filed three four twenty twenty. Great. This evidence trespass, forgery, fraud, baratry is noted in paragraph seven and eight. Who filed? You know, who filed this case <laughs> on three four? Uh, did, the, did the Commonwealth, did Mr. and Mrs. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania walk into the court and file this case? I'm highly doubting it. So uh, the, I know the cop didn't file it. So I know the cop gave it to some petty fogger shyster attorney who's got no jurisdiction over me, lo, no legal standing involving me, and no personal knowledge of anything that supposedly occurred this day. So Mr. Petty fogger shyster attorney filed this case. That's called fraud. That's forgery. So it's not an innocent thing he's doing. It's forgery and fraud. Let's go look at number 12. Oh, there's their little citation, their little special citation. I mean, this, there's so many problems with this. So you have a cop who's a member of the executive branch. Members of the executive branch only execute orders that people tell them to do. They don't make. Uh, they don't make legal determinations. These are not uh, judges and juries. You know, these are not courts. You know, but Mr. Uh, Mr. Cop here decided that uh, he had jurisdiction over me and he had uh, that I broke one of his codes or some code that he's supposedly enforcing. And uh, so he said, we, we challenge everything. You know, I state this evidence is trespass, forgery, fraud and baratry, as noted in paragraph seven and eight. In addition, this constitutes securities fraud. Because this guy, this executive branch member, who's got no power to do anything, he can only execute orders, he took a pen and wrote on a piece of paper and put a dollar value on there. On there. He, he turned it into a security, a financial instrument. Isn't that special? Boy, I, I wish I could go around and take paper and just write things down and just, you know, poof, and make somebody else liable for them without them accepting it. I mean, uh, you know, I could do promissory notes, but the other party has to accept them. I'm, I'm not accepting any promissory note from this guy. You know, the guy's standing there with a gun. I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not consenting to anything. You know, it's, it's everything's done through force, threat, and duress. So it's really securities fraud. I said, as the document was forged and falsified in the name of a corporate fiction. Because he created this document in the name of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Well, again, I'm going to bang this home so people finally get this. I can't enforce rights for my friend or my neighbor. So I've seen somebody do something to my neighbor's property. And uh, he doesn't want to do anything, press charges. or uh, I can't go file. Uh, you know, I can't enforce his rights. He's got to enforce his own rights. So not only is the cop not enforcing... It's pretty bad enough. He's not even trying to force the rights of another man or woman. He's trying to force the rights of a corporate fiction. 
Well, that's very special there. You know, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. He's going to enforce the rights of Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck. You know, uh, I mean, th- th- this is th- this is the absurdity of this stuff. You know, this was forged and falsified in the name of a corporate fiction by a public servant, the cop, who represented it to be a valid commercial instrument, an obligation or contract. Remember, if any way, the only way somebody can uh, attach a piece of paper to you is you'd have to be their property. If they could write something down on a piece of paper and make it apply to you. Or you'd have to agree by way of contract. I've done neither with this guy. And this guy's basically, what he's doing, everything he's doing is through force, uh, threat, and duress. Because the guy's armed. Uh, you know, if, if he didn't have a gun, <laughs> I, I would keep driving. I wouldn't stop for this idiot. Let's move on to 13. Your role, defendant. Look at that. I, I, I didn't know I tried out for a part. This looks like a, like a, like a stage show. Like, I tried out, and they gave me the role of defendant. Well, yeah, ain't that beautiful. Remember I told you about these titles, these, uh, the, when, they, when they call you defendant or taxpayer. All they're trying to do here is trying to lower my status down from a man, which is below God, and they're trying to bring me down under the judge. They're trying to make me the low man on totem pole, the, the scum of the earth, basically. They're trying to bring me down to... So I, I can't really accept this role of defendant. I, I really don't want that role. I'm, I'm going to stick with man. I, I think the creator got it right. I'll, I'm going to stay with him. So I said, this evidence is trespass, forgery, fraud, and barratry as noted in paragraph 7 and 8. It constitutes an unlawful attempt to lower my status from that of a man, which is above a magisterial judge, to that of a defendant below a magisterial judge. It also constitutes an unlawful attempt by this court, this court not of record, to gain jurisdiction when no such jurisdiction exists, nor can it ever exist, as there's no probable cause, meaning there's no crime, nor is there a man or woman, a litigant, an actual real litigant, who, fought, who, fought, uh, who filed a verified claim. Whereas no one's claiming that I did anything to them or harmed them. So there exists no litigant and there's no controversy. Remember, courts are to, to resolve controversies. What controversy do I have with the cop? That he's an idiot? That, that he thinks, you know, he, uh, that, that, I'm loca- that, I'm, uh, that I live in a piece of paper and he could stop me and, and apply these corporate codes to me? Well, what controversy? I, there's no controversy with that guy. There, controversies come up when there's a, a, a party that's claiming that they were damaged or had a right violated. I didn't violate that cop's right, and I didn't damage that cop. So there's no probable cause. So there, there's no probable cause, and there's no litigant. I can't be a defendant. It's, it's just absurd. So let's move on to 14. This is like, it might as well be Chinese. 75, section 4703, section A, section uh, lead. Th- this is Chinese. In other words, there, there, I heard there's roughly 23 million statutes or something in the U.S. So, and listen, I, I don't live my life. I don't wake up each day and go, gee, I wonder what the pinheads in, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania did. That's where the legislature's got located. Gee, I wonder what they did today. So that I could figure out, let me, let me look through my 23 million statutes here to find out how I have to live my life today. How these people tell me I have to live my life. Total nonsense. Total nonsense. So I'm going to address this. Remember what I told you about paper, where, uh, you know, if somebody could write something down on a piece of paper and make it apply to me, I'd have to be their property. Or I'd have to have a contract with that man or woman. None exist in, in this matter. So let's go look at 14. I have no obligation, contract, to acknowledge, believe, adhere to, written instrument, whatever that is, the, the, the driving code thing, authored by other men and women, public servants. In other words, the rule of zero, if, if the other man or woman can, can never have more, to, they're always going to have zero more rights than me. So if they always have zero more rights than me, they can never have more rights than me. Well, this guy who's handing out this citation believes he has more rights than me, that he's authority over me. So, or whoever authored this, this nonsense, because I said authored by other men and women, public servants. I am an Alfonso Nixfagio. I am not property of the men and women, public servants who authored the foregoing instruments. So if I'm not their property, if I can't be their property, that's, that's a violation of the 13th Amendment, indentured servitude and slavery, then I would have to have a contract with these people. I, jeez, call me crazy. I don't remember signing contracts with these people to follow their law, statutes, codes, and ordinances. So let's move on to 15, number 15. Oh, look, a summary trial was previously scheduled. I told you they shut the court down when I showed up for this because I showed up with affidavits in hand and criminal complaints. It was not going to be a good day for these people. 
but the uh, the court was shut down. Uh, so guess what? He who lives the, leaves the battlefield first loses. Not my problem. I show up. You guys weren't there. Sorry, guys. Tough luck. Uh, you don't get a do-over. So it states, you know, I'm going to challenge this. Uh, I, a man on that Fonzo Nicholas Fadgel, appeared on June 4th, 2020 at 8.45 a.m. at Magisterial District Court in media with verified claims, criminal complaints, and affidavits in hand to be served to all public servants responsible and liable for initiating and perpetrating trespass, forgery, fraud, and barratry against I am in. Said court was closed on June 4th, 2020, 8.45 a.m. and defaulted on any alleged claim before it. Not my problem, they're closed. You know, what, what are you just going to keep closing? Have me come back and come back? And Listen, I, I want to get paid for my time. I, I'm not their slave. I'm not their property. If they want me to be somewhere, they're going to have to pay me to, to appear there. Said court never notified I am in, Alfonso Nicholas Fagiol of the closure beforehand, and is now liable for, uh, oh, forgot to change that. Hey, you see, you can do typos. For four hours. Four hours of my time billed at $500 an hour, and that's be $2,000 in total. Bill to said court attached. So I threw a little bill in there for them. Hey, the judge is getting paid. The cop's getting paid. Why shouldn't I get paid? I mean, uh, I'm not their property to drag into, you know, to a, a matter whenever they want. It doesn't work like that. Let's go look at number 16. The date. Okay. Pretty easy one here. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to bang the same things over and over. I'm not property of a public servant that rescheduled, nor do I have an obligation or contract to appear at the noted date, time, and place. I am and have right to be justly compensated for my time. I am and require a an appearance fee of ten thousand dollars paid five days in advance of any requested appearance. I am and require the existing bill of two thousand dollars attached be paid five days in advance. And I, a man, require the findings of fact and conclusions of law Andrew Goldberg, public servant, relies on to ignore now defaulted affidavit of facts served to the alleged mo unknown moving party. Uh, I forgot to put the date in It doesn't matter. It's on the other documents. Uh, so these, this guy was served an affidavit beforehand. Well, the, the court, because there's never any name on their paperwork, so there's no name to address it to. So I just addressed it to the court. And if whoever wants to pick up that hot potato, that's on them. They, they get to pick that up. So it seems Mr. Goldberg picked up the hot potato. So that's on him. He's now liable for this matter. Let's move on to number 17. Place. They give you the address. Great. Okay. Let's, let's go take the court apart, apart. Place. Magisterial District Court whatever their, their number is, isn't it? I state it's an improper venue, an improper court, as every court of Pennsylvania shall be a court of record with all the qualities and incidents of a court of record at common law. And that's, look, that's even, their statute even states that every court of Pennsylvania is a court of record. This little boat on court over here, this is not a court of record. So if it's not a court of record, it can't be a court of Pennsylvania. Say, there by, defini by definition cannot be a court of Pennsylvania. So what kind of court is this? This must be a private court. Oh, it's a municipal court. It is a private court. And I just quote the common law to them. The common law is that which derives its force and authority from the universal consent and immemorial practice of the people. It has never received the sanction of the legislature by an express act, which is the criterion by which it is distinguished from statute law. In other words, it's not written down. It's common sense. Don't harm your neighbor. Don't steal from your neighbor. Now, here's the court of record qualities. A. Proceeds according to the common law, not statutes and codes. These guys, you've seen the citation number. He, he wants to proceed according to a citation, which is part of a statute. That's not a common law court, so I guess it can't be a court of Pennsylvania. The tribunal's independent of the magistrate. The tribunal's the jury. The magistrate's the judge. What that means is they're separate, they're separate entities. And in a common law court, the jury decides both the law and the facts. And the judge is just a referee. Well, when you go to these little, uh, you know, kangaroo uh, traffic courts, he's judge and jury. The guy in the black dress is the judge and the jury. Well, that's not a, that's, that's not a common law court. So I guess it can't be a court of Pennsylvania. C, power to in fine or imprison for contempt. Traffic court, 
Not unless you do some crazy stuff in a traffic court, or are you going to be <laughs> fined or imprisoned for contempt? I mean, I, you know, that, so so th- that doesn't even meet the element of a court of record. D keeps a record of proceedings, and this doesn't just mean recording like a you know a video recorder recording the proceedings. Keeping a record of the proceedings means the paperwork that's filed into it, the affidavits you file into your case, uh, you know, any you know any any bills <laughs> that you find into your case for your time. They don't keep a, a record. Uh, your, your stuff's just going to sort of disappear. These people are famous for losing paperwork. So that's not an element of a court of record. And it generally has a seal. Now, they, they, you know, seals are generally uh, optional. But we just we even looked at their, their paperwork, and they got they don't have the state seal in there. They have the coat of arms. Like they're declaring a, you know, war against me. And there's also another one that, that I, I should, really should put in here. Uh, a common law court. When the facts are decided by the jury, uh, they can't be appealed. There is no appeal. So if you're in any kind of court where you can appeal, which is a traffic court or a tax court, if you can appeal, then you're not in a common law court, okay? And if you're not in a common law court, you're not in a court of record. And that means you're not in a, in here, you're not in a court of Pennsylvania. And court of records are basically, that's your right to trial by jury. The Seventh Amendment deals with civil matters. The Sixth Amendment deals with criminal matters. But you have a right to trial by jury at all times uh, in any matter. Uh, they don't get to suspend when you can and when you can't have. Like They can't say, like, well, traffic, you don't get to have it. No, no, no. no. In all matters, it states of $20 or more. Well, of course you know they're going to be asking for $20 or more in this stuff. This is a shakedown. You know, they're going to try and get $150, $250 out of you on the average. So if you're in a court that can be appealed, there's an appeal process, you're not in the right court. You're not in a court of record. You're not in a common law court. Let's go look at 18. 18, continuance requested by magisterial judge, uh, district judge, Andrew Goldberg. Let me get this straight. I have a judge moving a claim against me. Now, isn't he supposed to be the impartial third party? You know, he, he's just looking at the facts. I have a judge right here. Continue what's requested by. In other words, the attorney didn't request it. The prosecutor, the fiction didn't, didn't request it. The judge requested it. Now I got a judge trying to move a claim against me. This is point blank obvious and this is fraud that I'm not in a common law court. This is not a court of record. This is an administrative court. But I'm not part of their administration. I'm not their property. I have no contracts with these people. So why are they trying to drag me into... Why do they think they can drag me into an administrative court? They can't. Not when I follow the proper paperwork, affidavits and whatnot. But I just think that's fascinating. I got a judge moving an action against me. The, the man who's supposed to be deciding the matter, okay? Supposed to be the impartial, the trier of facts. He's moving the claim. Nobody else is. He's got no standing, he was never damaged. He's got no. He, first, he's got no jurisdiction. Uh, and that that goes into personal jurisdiction and subject matter jurisdiction, which we'll get into in, in another video. But he, he doesn't have jurisdiction. Let's, let's just state that he's got no legal standing because legal standing means he was had a right violated, was damaged or harmed in some way. Not nah, didn't do that to Mr. Goldberg. He wasn't even there. Oh, and he wasn't there, by the way. And that means he's got no personal knowledge in the matter. He doesn't know what happened on this day. Whether it happened or whether it didn't happen. And if he's going to claim he's claiming it happened, well, that's hearsay. He's, he's got no personal knowledge. So a guy with no jurisdiction, no legal standing, no personal knowledge, who's supposed to be a judge, is moving a claim against me. Talk about the epitome of fraud. And this one I love, reason, other. Well, I guess he could just cite anything. <laughs> you know, you know, he's a judge. He's a king. He don't need to cite anything. So I state, you know, Andrew... Goldberg fails to state a probable cause. State probable cause. Remember, there's got to be, if this is quasi-criminal, I don't care, they can call it whatever they want. There's no such thing as quasi-criminal. There's criminal and there's no not criminal. So if this is criminal, there's got to be probable cause. Uh, there's no probable cause here. There's no injured party. There's no one had a right violated. And I state, you know, I'm not the property of Andrew Goldberg, public servant, nor do I have an obligation with Andrew Goldberg. Andrew Goldberg is administering my property without right. Let's move on to 20. 20. 
This court has received your plea of not guilty to the above summary violation. Uh, this is beautiful. Look, they're going to keep. Look, the sum of zero zero has been accepted as collateral for your periods of trial. That's right. <laughs> That's about as much as I'm going to give them. Zero dot zero zero. Are you kidding me? What a shame proceeding this is. First of all, I never pled to anything. First of all, and, and who's acting as my attorney here? Acting, putting in pleas for me. Because I know I didn't plea. So is Goldberg playing for me? Uh, is is the, the, the court clerk playing? Is the, the, the Who's playing here? I didn't issue no plea. So I'm going to take that apart. This court has received your plea of not guilty. Yeah, right. This statement is a blatant lie by its author. It constitutes trespass, forgery, fraud, barratry, and identity theft. I am Ann Alfonso Nicholas Fagiol, did not, nor would I ever, plea to written instruments authored by men and women public servants, which I have no obligation or contract to acknowledge, believe, or adhere. I don't plea. I plea to my, my creator, my God. That's the only entity I plea to. I don't plea to men and women, and I certainly don't plea to paper. So that's a blatant lie, and this is what they're doing. Who are these people to issue pleas for you? I didn't grant anybody power of attorney to do anything for me. This is forgery and fraud. <clears throat> Let's go look at 21. You have the right to be represented by a petty fogger shyster attorney. No, thank you. You have the right to have any witnesses present. Witnesses to what? <laughs> what are they witnessing? <laughs> It is your responsibility to notify your attorney. Oh, oh, oh they're, they're going to tell me what my responsibilities are. That, 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 I, like I'm a little kid. Listen, it's your responsibility to wear your coat and wear your mittens now. You know, they're, they're going to be my mom and daddy. Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, again, more fraud, number 21. <clears throat> the three sentences of 21 constitute trespass and unsolicited legal advice. They give me legal advice. In an unlawful attempt to coerce I, a man, to lower my superior status of man to that below a judge. I want to get that little dig in there that I'm, I'm above you, buddy. And I'm not going to take the, uh, the, the debate to be the defendant below you. In an attempt to gain jurisdiction where none exists, nor can ever exist, as there's no probable cause. What's probable cause? It's a crime. I didn't hurt Goldberg. I didn't violate any of his rights. I didn't hurt the cop. I didn't violate his rights. What are we doing here? <clears throat> and and if it's they're going to try and say it's civil because something some of these things are civil. <clears throat> uh, uh, where's the verified claim? Where's the man or woman <clears throat> making a verified claim before this administrative court? You know, st what's standing here? Like uh, who did it, like? Is it a contract breach or or did I did I do something to them? I mean because you'd have to put a make a verified claim and you'd have to attach your name to it and and. There's, there's neither. There's no probable cause. And there's no verified claim. So there's no way that this hearing can be set up. A hearing for what? For their codes? I don't care about their codes. Let's go to 22. <clears throat> Failure to appear for your trial shall constitute consent to a trial in your absence. And if you are found guilty, the collateral deposited shall be forfeited. Well, they can keep my money there. They can keep my 0, 0.00. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, they can apply it to anything they want. You shall have the right to appeal within 30 days. Uh, for a travel de novo. What did I say about appeals? There's no appeals in common law. Don't believe me? Go read the Seventh Amendment. <laughs> it states all facts once decided cannot be retried by any court in the United States. So if you're in, if I'm in this court, I'm not in a common law court. And this is not an element of a court of record. So I must be in a court not of Pennsylvania because every court of Pennsylvania is a common law, is a, is a court of record, which is a common law court. So more fraud. Let's go look at 22. Failure to appear for your trial, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I am Ann Alfonso Nicholas Fagiol. I'm not owned by the author or anyone accepting responsibility, liability for this false statement. Nor do I have obligation contract with the author or anyone accepting responsibility, liability for this false statement. Then I go back to the other one. <clears throat> 30 days to, to, to appeal. Further evidence that this is not and cannot be a court of record. Therefore, is not a court of Pennsylvania. See paragraph 17. <clears throat> As no fact tried, this is, here's the language from the Seventh Amendment. <clears throat> no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise re-examined, which means appealed, in any court of the United States than according to the rules of common law. Let's go look at 23. I said everything on this document is fraud. If you have any questions, please call the above office immediately. Should you fail to appear for your summary trial, a warrant may be issued for your arrest. Really now? 
Okay, I, I want to see that one because I, I, I will take this guy's home, his bank account, his business from him. He does something like that. Uh, if you I say, note this, I am Alfonso Nicholas Fagel. I have no obligation or contract with public servants acting as an office, This all, whatever it is, this office is. <clears throat> In addition, this statement constitutes unsolicited legal advice, and all matters have already been addressed and resolved via the unrebutted affidavit served on 10 to 2020 with the number there and was defaulted on on 11 to so in other words everything's commerce because we, we already know this is not a judicial proceeding there's no witness there's no victims this is a commercial proceeding well that commercial proceeding there was an affidavit filed into this case they didn't respond they did they they they, they, they defaulted so now they're in default so everything's been resolved in this matter my friends you know, the affidavit speaks for itself. The petty fogger shyster judge, he can't get up there and speak for, uh, he's got no personal knowledge of anything. He's not a witness. He's, he's not a damaged party. So he can't challenge that affidavit. The only one who could challenge that affidavit is the cop, the policeman. He's not going to challenge that affidavit, and <clears throat> nor will the attorney let him challenge that affidavit because he knows that the cop will get his clock cleaned, and he'll probably get his clock cleaned, and the, and the little borough or the, the, the town will get their clock cleaned. Because everything they're doing is fraud, and the cops got no clue. The, 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 I, I don't want to take too many shots at cops, but some cops are good. I don't, I don't want to bang all cops, but uh, these cops don't know, a lot of these cops don't know the basics. I mean, I, I've heard cops state that, you know, uh, I, somebody asked them, you know, what's the probable cause? And they said, you know, you went through a stop sign. That's not probable cause. Probable cause, go look at how you secure a warrant. Warrants are secured by a, a oath or affirmation by the affiant. Secured by basically probable cause. The, the affiant's got to state what crime you committed uh, or what crime you're about to commit. Like I said, if, if I ran the light and the cop seen me run the light, he couldn't go to a judge and get a, get a warrant. The judge would laugh at him. So if he can't get a warrant, there's no probable cause. Pretty basic. Now, this one I love. Should you fail to appear, they're going to yeah, gonna issue a warrant for my arrest. Really? Well, this statement constitutes, this is assault. <clears throat> because if you're telling me you're going you're gonna to kidnap me, <clears throat> you're going to come out and grab me and kidnap me. <clears throat> well, that's assault. <clears throat> that's extortion with threats to commit battery and kidnapping. You know, I, I state, you know, uh, I'm a man. The alleged litigant is a corporate fiction, not real, which constitutes fraud and barratry. I, a man, have no obligation or contract to appear, and there exists no probable cause or crime requiring an appearance. Why would I appear at this court? As soon as I step foot in this court, I waive numerous constitutional rights, I would waive. Not only would I waive those constitutional rights, I would be committing crimes upon myself. I would be contributing the crimes that are being committed to me. I, I, I don't want to help these criminals create more crimes against me. I, I have no intention of showing up to this hearing. I'll take my chances with Mr. Goldberg. and I'll, I'll take him on a little ride he's, he's not going to believe. So let's go to number 24. Look, he signed it. Oh, wonderful. What's the signature? The signature's got no... Uh, what, what, are you, what are you verifying? That you committed forgery and fraud? Like I said, this evidence is trespass, forgery, fraud, barratry, and identity theft. And, and it is identity theft. This guy's trying to use my identity to extort money from me. That's identity theft. You don't need someone to take a credit card or, or you know, get a credit card in your name. If someone's trying to use your name to or, or your property... To get money from you, to, to extort money from you, that's a crime. That's extortion. That's identity theft. I said, oh, and Andrew Goldberg possesses no personal, no, uh, uh, he he's got no personal or subject matter jurisdiction over I am man. And personal jurisdiction has gotten, basically, that's why I have a process server. A process server knocks on your door. Mr. Fagio, you've been served. He gives you a copy of the claim or the complaint and a copy of the summons, the court summons attached. That's why you have process servers. That's how courts, that's how cases get initiated by way of process server. You don't initiate cases through the mail. You don't send envelopes with normal stamps. And, and my God, then people are wasting their money hiring process servers for $60, $70, $100. Just take an envelope and slap a, a, a stamp on it. No, you, you, don't, you don't initiate suits that way. You initiate suits with pro with through a process server, so uh, the, the, the whole thing, like I said, every element on here is fraud. And then I'll, I'll state on here. Listen, 
I'll declare in the penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States of America that the foregoing is true and correct. And I just put the day I executed this. So I'm telling them I'm willing to come in under penalty of perjury and swear under oath that everything I put on this document is true. And I guarantee the petty fogger shyster attorney, or the, he's now a he's now a magistrate, a magisterial judge. He's not going to come in and rebut it. Everything he did was fraud. That paperwork is nothing but fraud. I mean, they're, they're just from the, the the very start, it's fraud. So I just wanted to give you an overview. You could do the same thing with every document you get. Do it with the citation the cop gives you. You can do it with a tax bill. You could do it with anything. Take their documents apart. Never cede any inch to them. In other words, if there's 25 elements on here, I'm going to challenge all 25 elements. I'm not going to give them a pass on anything. I'm going to make them work their rear ends off to just get to just get a fraction of an inch. I, I'm not going to cede them anything. So challenge everything. Every document anyone ever gives to you, just start doing this with it. Take it apart for the fraud that it actually is. And stick it back in their face by way of affidavit. Now, this is not an affidavit. This is what's called a declaration under penalty of perjury. But I've included my affidavit of status in here. Like I said, I include my affidavit of status with everything I ever file. So I'll stand on that affidavit and I'll stand on this declaration. And if Mr. Pettifogger Scheister, judge over here, he wants to step forward with his affidavit, well, I'd be happy to have a little duel with him over affidavits because I know what he did is fraud and he knows it's fraud too. So uh, we'll see how this plays out. But the, this stuff was just sent out today. So just get in the habit of challenging everything. So that's about it for today. Like I said, we're going to deconstruct this matrix piece by piece and show you that these, these people, are, it, it's all, you know, this is all the man behind the curtain of the Wizard of Oz. There's, there's really nobody there when you really start drilling it down and looking at it. Take care, stay safe, and don't let these people get you down.